On February 13, 2009, in North Philadelphia, an armed felon murdered police officer John Palowski. Thousands gathered for his funeral seven days later at the Cathedral Basilica of Peter and Paul. Events like this, full of rituals and symbols, display for the public the police officer's role in society. Clothing styled after the ancestral symbols our forebears brought to this country remind everyone that police officers are not outsiders, they're one of us. Police uniforms reassure the public that officers serve who else wears white gloves? Ushers and waiters. Even the objects police use also contain symbolic meaning. Nothing says trust in decency quite like the sheriff's star. Cops come from all over the country for these funerals. In fact, here the cops vastly outnumber private individuals. Seeing so many uniforms at one time makes obvious how little we actually understand about the outfits we see every day, and how little we actually know about our protectors. Uniforms and rituals have a meaning for the public, but another meaning entirely for those who can translate the ribbons and badges that decorate breast pockets and shoulders. Indeed, this mass display of people in a ritual is, in many ways, aimed at the officers themselves. They have particularly stressful and dangerous jobs. Between 2007 and 2009, six Philadelphia officers died in the line of duty. The mayor comes out to give a eulogy, and the city closes down streets for these events, all to express the public's gratitude and respect. This large ritual is also a way for the police department to show concern for its own members. This event reminds us that police officers look after our safety, that which we hold most dear, and they reaffirm for our protectors their solidarity as a fraternity which looks after its members. The police have a unique role in society. They get to use force. We don't. And therein lies the problem, because they don't treat everyone equally. Some people and some traditions are valued more highly than others. The police are ostensibly our protectors, solely defenders, and yet they have a distinctly soldierly demeanor. Police outfits are modeled after Navy uniforms, and many officers served in the armed forces. These rituals affirm without nuance. They ask us to celebrate without consideration, but there is much to consider. In 1979, a court ruled that 18 high-ranking Philadelphia officials, including the mayor, had committed or condoned widespread police brutality. 
In 1985, in an attempt to arrest members of an Afrocentric back to nature group called MOVE, the police bombed the group headquarters in a residential area, killing 11 and destroying the entire block. Between 2002 and 2008, Philadelphia officials paid out $24 million to plaintiffs victimized by police misconduct. These rituals don't just remind the public that police have a monopoly on the use of force. They also reaffirm for the police the department's role as a fraternity that looks after its members, a group with symbols the public isn't meant to understand. Being a member of this brotherhood carries expectations. The police are notorious for refusing to testify against each other, a phenomenon typically referred to as the blue wall of silence. This wall is strengthened by rituals of this magnitude, ceremonies that ask the police to stand back to back in solidarity while public officials obsequiously offer blanket praise for an off-troubled organization. We asked the police to look after our public institutions. And yet, do they let our public institutions look after them?